Hello, Osprey families. We're so glad to be sending you this video of all of us and letting you know what we're going to be doing this year and um, what we have in place for the kids to keep them safe and healthy. And um, we welcome all of you that we know and are thrilled to have a bunch of new families with us also. Um, so far, the year has been going really well. The kids have been really good, especially with all of the um, things that are in place to keep them safe. Um, but today we're gonna talk to you a little bit about our schedules and things, and then talk to you about our subject areas. So I'm gonna have Mr. Coder flip the slide so you can see our team. This is us getting ready for school. Um, we were trying to make things as comfortable for the kids. So it was a, seemed like a happy opening kind of place to come. And you'll notice our TA, Mrs. Luzzi, is in the picture with us. She's a big part of our team and is in all of our classes. And I'm just going to move right from there. And we're going to talk about subject areas first. So I'm going to go right to language arts. So on my slide for language arts, I just have a, a lot of information about trying to get the kids to be curious and, and to gain a love for reading. Uh, we're trying all different kinds of texts, challenging to some of them that what we read in class and then some independent um, texts for them and really try to cultivate some stamina so that they're able to read. We, we will read a, a bunch of different novels this year. We'll also do some classic short stories. They'll be writing a literary essay. They'll write argument pieces. They'll write narrative text. Uh, we'll do a couple aligned things with um, social studies, with, with the Revolutionary and Civil War. Um, we really look for the, for the kids to start to pick out patterns in literature, um, using how authors use language to kind of get their meanings across. Uh, we try to get them to understand the importance of storytelling and how stories are passed down and that we Hopefully, we'll look at a lot of, of, of a range of diverse backgrounds and voices and perspectives so that they're able to kind of see how things work of throughout the world and what came before them. So I'm really excited to have them all back in class. Um, it's really going to be a great year and hopefully we will stay in school so we can be doing things here. And uh, you can go back and you'll have this slideshow to go back and read. I don't want to just read everything to you, but I'm really excited to have all the kids back and they seem really excited to be here and so far have been working really hard in school. We're hoping that most of them carry that over to out of school also when the days they're home. All right, and I'm going to move on to the next subject area. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Marshawn. I'm the social studies teacher and I agree with Holly. The kids have been so focused in class. It's really been a joy to have them back. Um, I'm thrilled to be your social studies teacher. Um, this year we're going to be studying American history with a focus on the American Revolution, the Civil War, Reconstruction, and westward expansion. And we're also going to touch upon the civil rights movement as well. Um, throughout the year, you will participate in a variety of activities that will help your child um, understand political, historical, geographical, economic, and cultural aspects connected with each topic. In addition, we're, we will discuss current events as well. It's going to be an excellent year. Hi, I'm Miss Love and I'm the science teacher. And um, we are just like everyone else we're very glad to get the kids back into school so we can give them the support they need and they get the also to see their friends and have social interaction as well so in science um what we're doing is every week with the hybrid model we have some things that are more informational and some things that are more um requiring discourse and problem solving and all that. So we're trying, I'm trying to structure the class so that some of the things that they do independently are more just getting the background information. And then in class, we can talk about how we apply that, what does it mean, and do some other activities. As far as labs, 
We're doing some little labs if there are things where students can have their own set of equipment for safety. At other times, we may adapt things and do them as a demonstration as well, but we're gonna try to keep the class as active as we possibly can um, during this time. And our topics for the eighth grade this year are um, human impact on the environment, which includes climate change and some of the other ways that humans um, use the environment and some of the ways maybe we could do better. Um, we're gonna be looking at genetics and also the whole process of um, natural selection and evolution and what, what biological diversity is in our planet and why that's important. And then finally, we will do something with physics, which will be Newton's laws of motion which is the forces and interactions. So we should have a pretty good year with a lot of interesting topics. And so far the students are off to a great start. Hi everyone, I'm Lance Coderre. I'm the math teacher on the team. I'd just like to say, welcome back to all of our Osprey families from seventh grade and, and welcome to all the, the new families that are joining us. Uh, we have, I believe five new students on our team and it's great to have, uh, have them with us this year. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been challenging this year, obviously, with, with all the things that are happening with, with um, you know, the hybrid learning model. But I, you know, I'm always of the belief that you know, when, we, when we are challenged, it certainly makes us stronger. And I, I think the kids have risen to the occasion so far. And so that's been um, really a, a great thing to see, uh, you know, with, with the mask breaks and all the things that are just new this year and, and all of the, the you know, safety measures. Um, it's been, you know, an experience. I think that the kids have, as I said a moment ago, they've really risen up, and that's that's wonderful. Um, one of the, one of the courses I teach, as you see here, is is the uh, uh, the, the typical math eight course, which is a pre-algebra course, uh, and you know we cover a variety of pre-algebra topics, and um, the majority of students from from this class then go on to uh, algebra one at the high school. So in ninth grade, they'll be placed in an algebra one class. Um, the uh, other class that I teach on team uh, is uh, Algebra 1, and there's one section of that, uh, and, and that is a, a you know, very challenging course. Uh, it is equivalent to the high school course, uh, and there is a midterm exam administered usually January, okay, uh, and then a final exam administered also in that course, uh, which is um, at the end of the school year. Uh, and from there, students uh, with successful completion are placed in geometry at the high school for ninth grade. And that's either geometry A-level or geometry honors. Um, but uh, it's, it's really, you know, uh, this, this year I think will be challenging for all. Uh, it's gonna be a year full of, uh, you know, a variety of topics and, you know, very much looking forward to it. And I know the kids will be up for it as well. So, that's, uh, that's math, and again, welcome back to everyone. I'm gonna pass it on to Mrs. Judd. Hi, I'm Jessica Judd. I'm the special education teacher on the Osprey team. Um, so if any of your students have resource on their schedule, um, they would come to the resource room, and that's where we would work on uh, meeting the goals on their individual academic plans. Um, like Ms. Will said earlier, we're very fortunate to have a teaching assistant in our Kiva, Mrs. Luzzi. Um, both she and I teach, help teach one period of each academic class during the day. Um, and we're there to assist all of the students in the room. So there's a pretty good chance that your child has at least one of us in some of their academic classes. Um, and we're always available either in person in the resource room um, or through Google Classroom. We've uh, set up individual meetings with students that needed some additional help. So you can always feel free to reach out to us if your child is struggling in any way. And then I'm going to jump right into our Kiva schedule. Um, so I'm sure at this point, everybody's familiar with the term cohort. Um, we've had a lot of changes to try to keep the cohorts uh, together in Eastline Middle School, the cohort is defined as our Kiva. Um, so our kids start the day in life arts, and that looks a little different this year because the life arts are split up by Kiva. So in the past, they may have gym class with eighth graders from all over the building. Now their life arts classes are just strictly by Kiva. So that's to kind of try to keep the cohorts together and separate. 
Um, we've also incorporated three mask breaks into our daily schedules. So that's a time for us to take all of the kids outside. We get to take their masks off. They still stay socially distant from each other, um, but it's a good time to get some fresh air, run around a little bit and um, get a break from the mask. Um, our classes, our academic classes, do not rotate anymore. In the past, they rotated throughout the day. Um, now, if they have math first period, math is always first period. Um, so that doesn't change. We've also adapted a one-way movement throughout our Kiva. So um, the kids only move in one direction, and that's to help prevent them passing each other and kind of congregating out in the halls. Um, and as you know, we don't use the lockers anymore, so it keeps them out of the locker area completely. Um, the only other change to our regular schedule is lunch is also done by Kiva now. So where they used to have um, mixed lunches with other grade eight students, now they just have lunch with our Kiva um, separately. And this is our Wednesday schedule. So Wednesdays right now are virtual for all students. Um, they are a half day schedule. So students log in to their uh, Google Classrooms in the morning and they just follow their regular schedule. There's usually Google Meets. You look at the bottom of the screen. Um, that's what the banner at the top of the Google Meet section says. And at the very bottom, it says meet link. That's what students would click on and it would bring them right to the meeting for their class. And they just follow their regular half day schedule. And each of their classes, including life arts, will meet throughout the day on Wednesday following that half day schedule. Okay. Your um, child will need some supplies that they um, should bring to school and have in their backpack each day, including a pencil pouch with pencils, pens, colored pencils, highlighters, scissors, glue sticks, post-its, calculator, protractor, masking tape, um, and two ultra fine tip black Sharpies. Those are excellent for when we're doing mapping. Hand sanitizer, a three ring binder, dividers for the binder, paper, Composition books, rulers, earbuds, and your student may bring a personal laptop or tablet to and from school until a device is provided. And please charge your device at home. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about distance learning now and, and tell you some, give you some guidance on that and some expectations for, um, you know, while your students are at home. You know, as you know, with the hybrid model, all students are uh, at home learning for three days a week at, you know, at minimum, unless they are virtual Vikings. Uh, and so, for instance, if cohort A is in school on Monday and Tuesday, right, they would be home Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And, you know, cohort B is in school Thursday and Friday. They would be home learning Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And as Mrs. Judd mentioned a minute ago, those Wednesday days, everyone, uh, you know, uh, zooms in or goes to their Google Classroom, I should say, and has a, a Google Meet. Uh, one thing we wanted to mention about that is uh, please remind your student, uh, and we've done this numerous times, to keep their video on. Um, they, they need to be uh, present in us for, uh, for us to be able to view while they're there, so we don't want them to shut their video down. They're certainly uh, welcome and encouraged to mute themselves um, so there's no extra noise from the outside. But um, we do want the video turned on. Um, and if there's a need for them to respond, you know, they can unmute at certain times. But that's uh, just a reminder. Um, you know, the other thing I, I, I did want to mention is on, on the days that they are home that are not, not Wednesdays, but the other two days that they're home during the week, um, we, we want to remind you and, and, and your students as well that those are still school days for them. And those are days that they have been given assignments. Um, whether it be online, uh, could be uh, paper, pencil work, whatever. Um, they're, they're definitely been given work for those two days. So it is a school day for them. It's just school from home. And we want to encourage them. Uh, you know, those are our days where they should be working for a large part of that school day 
on the assignments that they were given um, from, from each classroom, okay? Uh, and then there's just some other things and you can see these tips here. Um, you know, if, if you have any questions on this, you know, please reach out to uh, one of the teachers on the team. Um, and then also uh, the second bullet down about posting, whether it's in Google Classroom or on a Zoom meet or whatever it may be, uh, just we wanna make sure that the kids are posting appropriate things at all times. Um, you know, and, and we always give that question of, you know, would you say that or do that in school? That's a good um, little test for them to say whether or not they should be posting anything that they, that they do happen to, to write down. Um, also, uh, on the days they are home, it's really important to have that fixed schedule and to kind of know, you know, this is the time I've set aside to do the work, whether it's by subject area or what or whatnot. The, um, that is an important thing because, um, you know, if they just go into the day without a plan, then, you know, things might get tricky or difficult for them. Um, and finding a spot at, at the house, um, that's a good, um, a good place for them uh, with some quiet and some, you know, ability to concentrate you know, without distractions like TVs and phones and all of those things that kind of get in the way. If we can, um, you know, if you can encourage them to, to find a, a little spot in the house and kind of stick to that somewhere where they can be productive. Um, and, and just remember, this is certainly new uh, for us as well. You know, we are learning as we go. We are testing things out and seeing what works, what doesn't. Um, but uh, it's, it's really, um, you know, it's something that we will adjust. We will make changes as necessary. And, you know, our goal is, of course, to get it to the point where things are, are working smoothly. And I, I will say we've already um, made a lot of adjustments and changes that have made things easier for us. So. Um, those are just some reminders about that. And again, please reach out if you have any questions. Okay, so one of the things that we thought would be helpful to all of you is to see exactly what your child has as far as their Google Classroom at home. So you can be clear if they're telling you they don't know where to find something. So um, the student view is actually a little bit different from what we see. And what you're going to see on the next few slides our screenshot of a student's account, okay? It's like a generic student's account. So first of all, when they log in, this is what they're going to see. All of their subjects are listed there, as well as if you see the second one in the bottom row, that's our team page. So if there's anything for the whole team, we'll put it there. But generally speaking, you have your team classes, as well as um, foreign language, tech ed, all of that. So every single class has a, um, a Google Classroom that can all be accessed from this main dashboard when they log in. And all they would do is click on their specific subject. The other thing, if you notice in the top left corner in the green circle with the red arrows, there's two other options when they go to this page. They can either go to the specific subject or they can go to the to-do list or they can go to the calendar. And I'm gonna show you what each of these things look like. Okay, so this right here is the to-do um, option. And you'll see it's just a list of everything. Now there's multiple categories. At the very top circled, there's one that says no due date. We're gonna look at that one in a minute. But the one that's open, um, where you see the little carrot up, that's the this week. So anything that's due this week is there. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that some due dates may be a little bit different for cohort A and B. So for science, I know a lot of my due dates, I'll put it for cohort A, but there's a notation in the assignment what the due date. So if it's due on a Monday for cohort A, it would be Thursday for the cohort B. And we're keeping track of that and we understand, you know, if it's something that has to physically be handed in, it's a little bit different. There are other things that are virtual that might be due for everyone on a Friday. So you're gonna see a list right there. You see some science thing, you see a PE thing and you see, oh, can you go back, Mr. Coder? And you can see um, LA things. Now below it, at the very bottom circle, there are options where you can open up for things that are due next week and things that are due later. So depending on the subject, it'll pop up there and the little carrot that's facing downward, if you click, click on it, it'll open up. So the very top one says no due date and you'll see there's a circle with the carrot facing down, we're gonna look at that one on the next page. Okay, so there you're gonna see, and those are Mr. Coderre's primarily. He does several of them with no due date, but he will tell them in his class when they're due. 
So your, stu your child should look at all of those. The no due date and the this week are the priority followed by things that are more long-term. Okay, now this is the calendar view, which you also saw in their dashboard. So if uh, your child or you are a person who likes more of the graph and chart approach instead of the list approach, this is very clear and just shows on a day-by-day -day basis what is due. And this is up for this week, but at the top you have the op option to go to next week as well, or even the previous week. And this is the view that your child will see if they click on a specific subject. So on that main page where we had all the subjects listed, if you clicked on language arts, this is what you'll see. And there's two sections to this. One is the stream, which is just where we will put up general announcements. And the other one is the classwork that we're gonna look at in a moment. Um, so at the one thing also, we've had people wondering, and the students have all looked at this, right underneath the class, you'll see a meet link. And it says http meet.google.com. That's the link that they generally need to click on for Wednesday for our virtual class with all of the Ospreys. The only, the only, um, Exception to that was yesterday when we had a project O thing for everybody. But um, you see Miss Wills on her page has a list of, you know, everything that's going on this week. I'm doing the same thing. So the, the, the stream is a good place for students to look for any updates, any clarification, and just like a general message. Okay. The other thing we want to look at too, which we're looking at next, will be that classwork button. And when they go to classwork, this is what they're going to see. So every teacher has all of their assignments and generally they're ordered from the most recent to the ones so they're like reverse chronological order and then we will section it out. So Ms. Wills has hers sectioned out with the assignments specifically on the novel that they're reading and then some general resources at the bottom. And then for science, I have something similar. So this is my classwork page. Again, they're listed with the most recent first, and you'll see um, anything to do with Project O. We had a pre-lab, and then we have just yesterday are there. I have a general notes, just like they used to have a general notes section in their notebook. Um, I'm going to have general notes and materials listed there for them. And then the unit that we're doing right now, which is evolution, and those are the assignments that we're working on right now. And finally, people have asked us a lot of questions about some of the other things we use. These are all various interactive platforms that help us to make things interesting. Um, and different subjects will use different things. I believe LA and social studies, they use vocabulary. For science, um, I'm using Nearpod, which is an interactive, like a very fancy slideshow where the activities are embedded in. Um, Edpuzzle is... Um, a platform where you can take a video and embed the questions right in there. Newsella will give us articles for them to read. Um, and then the Memmean is a new one. So all of these things are things that we're using with students. And they're also things that we explain in class. So when they go home, if they're using one of these, they have some experience with it. Um, and whenever we give an assignment with any of these, all of the directions and everything they need to know and any links they need to go to or any code they need to get into it will all be posted in Google Classroom. So the Google Classroom is the one stop shopping and all of these other things would follow from there. So um, off to Ms. Wills. All right, so thanks for um, being a part of our presentation. We're hoping that at some point we'll get to see and meet some of you in person. Um, we wanted to make sure that you realized all of our email addresses are here. We're really good responding back to emails. If it's something that you need everybody to know, you can put us all on one. Um, you can certainly just email one teacher if you have questions about an assignment. One of the things that, is, that this year, more than any other, although it's always important, is to try to get your student to read the directions. I find that... Um, a lot of the questions I get are because they haven't bothered to read the directions. And I know how that works. I'm a person that, you know, when I get something and I have to put it together, I don't always open the manual first. I'm like, oh, can I do this without that? And then I end up having to go back. 
So if you could just, you know, really stretch that importance to them, that would be great. Um, we hope that this was helpful and we really do hope that we get to see you in person and we're just really glad to be here with all of them. And with that, we're going to close out. So thank you very much and goodbye. Bye. Bye.